quarter to six. And uh, me and the young fella and Wicker are on the road. We're heading up to Derville Island. And uh, we're going to call by a fishing shop. On. It's, uh, we're having dinner. We're going to call by a shop on the way there, pick up some fishing gear, and then we're headed out for some kingfish and some snapper. Got the, uh, the DNA boat on the back. And we're actually going to meet up with Jason, um, who made the boat and owns the company. And he's going to take us out to, to a place, a uh, wilderness lodge out in the Irvo Island where we're going to stay. And hopefully get on to some kingies and, uh, and some snappers. So watch this space. Uh, we'll tune in a bit later on tonight when we get to our campsite. And then also tomorrow morning. Tally ho. Uh, made it to Murchison. Uh, just at a friend's house. Friends aren't actually here at the moment. They're overseas, but pretty sure we know where the spare key is. So we're just going to um, have a look for it. Yeah, hey, keys! Uh, Oi. Hey. <laughs> well, that was bloody easy. So if, uh, if anyone wants to come around here, the keys are just in the drawer. <laughs> we haven't tried them in the door yet. Hopefully no one's home. <laughs> Looks like someone's home, but I'm pretty sure they're all overseas. There's a bag there. And some skis. It actually looks like someone's here. That'd be classic if there is. They're like, who are you? No, who are you? There you go, the doors open. I'll be back, you're all rock stars. Oh awesome. That's a nice welcome. And um box of two on the table. Oh there's beer in there too. Hey! How's that? Hello, anyone home? No, no one's home, it's just us. Alright, um, I'm going to go and have a dookie on the toilet, because that's usually what I do when I go to people's houses. I go to the toilet and... Um, I don't actually, so... <laughs> you can still invite me around your house, I won't hit the toilet straight away. I'm going to cut now. Um, Lisa, if you're watching this, someone stole in your pantry <laughs> and put a brand new gas stove there. I don't know where the pantry's gone. <laughs> it's not bloody there anymore. And I think you guys have gone overseas and left your gas on. So I'm going to turn it off at the gas bottle so the house doesn't blow up. It actually looks like someone's living here at the moment. Um, oh, Sunny, I slept in your bed last night. Thanks, mate. It's real comfortable. And now uh, we let the fire warm the house up a bit. And um, now we're off, so cheers guys, appreciate it. <coughs> on our way to Nelson. Um, do some shopping, and then get some fishing gear, and then we're off to Derval Island. Oi, 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 <laughs> what are you doing bro? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> We're not actually allowed to catch these eels. We've had strict instructions not to catch their pet eels, and Jack's biffing rocks at them. <laughs> we were just talking about what um, a good bait for snapper is, and it's eel. But yeah, seeing as we're not allowed to catch these ones, we won't catch one. Bloody kids. Sorry about that, uh, Lisa. We're not actually catching any of your eels. You'll be glad to know. Right on, here we are at Ace Engineering, our builders of the DNA boat. And this is the new model, 450C, got a 50 horse, this is Daniel from Fluid Electronics. How you doing mate? Hey Johnson. He's just uh, hooking up the, all the electronics for it, Simrad. It's got a, oh, he's getting there, getting the transducer on the back. And um, this one comes with a 50 horse it looks like, isn't it? And we'll just go onto the factory here and, and see what else he's got going on. Um, Jason also makes ute boxes and it does a whole bunch of other stuff, dairy sheds and all the rest of it. So this is this is the tool shed here. I can't uh, I can't show you too much of the the, the trade secrets. So yeah, this is this is the kind of toolboxes you're looking at getting if you ask one of these. They're all custom fit. Pretty handy. This is uh, this is Glenn right here. He's our chief mechanic. This is Jason right there. He owns it. And uh, Russell, this is Russell. Russell's Russell's build, <laughs> building a shower door. For this thing right here, <laughs> check this out. This is the um, I don't know what it is, but it's awesome, and I want one. <laughs> I can't afford one of these just yet, but uh, yeah, check it out. That's a uh, built to, to a custom built for a client, and this is the uh, this me machine here 
is a jet boat. Yes, I will be getting one of those because uh, Riptech aren't making boats anymore. And this here is a um, is an ocean going jet boat designed to bang up and up and down river mouths and whatnot, so you can get out in the surf. Uh, we're going to be trialling this out um, in a couple of weeks. Jason's going to come down the coast and we're going to take this down some of the west coast rivers and go fishing in it. Pretty awesome. Um, powered by a Honda uh, Yaris, it's a Toyota Yaris engine. This is, a, this is another one of the, the new 450Cs. It's pretty awesome. It's got crocodile skin vinyl on it and uh, he's just doing a run. We've got another jet boat here. Um, I'm pretty sure this thing is for sale. So if you're keen to, to get a price on, on these, just drop me a line and I'll, I can let you know. They're really quiet, they're very economical um, and super easy to fix. If anything goes wrong with the engine, it's really easy, easy to maintain. And if the engine blows up, we just whack it out, smack another one in. But Toyota engines, super reliable. I don't think you have a problem with the engine blowing up. Now, once again, these, these jet boats here aren't really designed for rivers. You can get up and down rivers in them, but they're mainly an ocean going jet boat. Uh, designs you can get in and out of difficult river mouths so you can go really shallow across bars and turn them really quickly too so you don't get shit. Uh, Smitty almost sunk his boat going out of the Mai Tai river mouth. Bit sketchy. I know, sorry, it was Bruce Bay. Yeah, it was the Mai Tai river mouth down in Bruce Bay. So this is uh, Ace Engineering. This is the factory. We're just going to go into Nelson now and get a couple of rods because mine won't be able to handle the jam along Kingies and then off to Durval Island. Let's do it. Right, we made it to Nelson, and we're currently standing outside Big Blue here, diving fish. And uh, Mark, the owner, has hooked us up a hell of a deal on some Okuma rods that will handle the jana when it comes to kingfish. Um, they retail around 300 bucks a pop. And, um, yeah, he's given us a bit of a discount, which is bloody awesome. So if you're after some pretty good deals up in Nelson, or you can buy them from anywhere in the country, actually, um, get a hold of, uh, of Big Blue diving fish. Yeah, let's go meet the owner, eh? How you doing, mate? Mark, was it? How are you, mate? Hey, mate, Josh. Anthony. Yeah, Anthony, yeah. good. Who's that? Um, I don't know who Anthony is, but uh, he's he's gonna make it onto the the internetness there. And so uh, yeah, Mark's gonna hook us up with a sweet wee number. Um, what is this, mate? Uh, Akuma Cortez. Ten jigging reel for kingies. Nice and light, easy to use, good uh, parabolic action, great for getting big kingies up there. Yeah, you lads are going to be doing. I didn't actually yeah. believe him when he pulled the rod out because it's so skinny, it's carbon fibre and it, it didn't look like it would catch a mullet but um, yeah, you cow down at the end and I put the put the herd on and I tell you what, for such a small rod it certainly looks like it can handle it. Uh, hopefully we'll get on some kingfish and be able to put it through its paces tonight, tomorrow. What do you reckon Jack? Sweet. At the Wilderness Lodge in the Marlborough Sounds. You wouldn't bloody believe it, I dropped my camera in today <laughs> into the water, it's gone. So you missed today's kingfish action. No, we didn't get a heck of a lot, we got a couple of rats, got some kawai, a bunch of blue cod, which we chucked back, because you're not allowed to keep damn blue cod up here, they have to be over 30 and under 35, which is ridiculous, uh, because <laughs> half the bloody cod you get uh, hooked in the gills and you have to chuck them back. Even though we're using big hooks, we still managed to gill hook a few. They just float away dying. So I think something needs to change. There's plenty of cod in the Marlborough Sounds now. Uh, they need to address that size limit, whatever it is, because they're breeding like bloody hotcakes. Wherever I went diving, went for a bit of a dive today too, spared a couple of butters. <laughs> you missed all that as well, because what did I do? I dropped the bloody camera in. I know, actually, I got a bit of that on one of the GoPros. It's just the other GoPro I lost. I lost the eye on, still got the GoPro. Yeah. Where's Jack? Come on, bro. <laughs> Jack's rowing the boat out. He's, uh, First time rowing, <laughs> you can probably see it. be interesting to see if you can work it out. You've got to go backwards, bro. You've got to row backwards. So sit the other way on the seat. Yeah, he'll get it. He'll figure it out. You see me do it a few times. How hard can it be? Uh, the other fellas have gone back to get gas because we almost ran out of gas today. Man, it was rough around the corner. Holy shit, we came through one little bit and um, we got the boat clear out of the water a couple of times. Jack's mum's going to crap her decks when she sees it. But... 
it was all good. We handled the jandal. Good old DNA boat. No worries, mate. Good work, bro. We're heading out to sea, are we? No. Oh. <laughs> you can do them both in the same opposite directions to turn it real quick. That's it, that's it, yeah, nice. Alright, let her rip. There's a wilderness lodge in the background there. Pretty primo place where we're staying. There was a deer feeding on that grass last night. Pretty awesome. There's the lodge right there. Deer feeding just there. Go see if we can spot them tonight, eh, bro? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going back out to sea again. I'm trying to head down the road. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Finicky little buggers, these boats. I think I just filled my boots up with water. Well, things have uh, taken a slight, uh, a slightly different tack, and we're now clambering through the bush behind the wilderness lodge because there's no water for the lodge, and um, the manager's not here. His mum's here, but he's not here. So we're going to climb up, see if we can find where the where the inflow is, where the water comes from out of the creek. I reckon it's been blocked. It looks like they've had a good flood through here in the last week. So what's happened is it's probably just flushed the intake out of the out of the creek, or it's buried in mud, or it's blocked. So well, look at that. There's a bloody track here. <laughs> well, yeah. I think next time we'll come up the track. Instead of climbing up waterfalls. All right, let's go, bro. Any water in that? Empty, eh? All right, where's the other? Those are the header tanks. There they are. So the hose is gonna be above these, so we need to keep going up the creek. Check that hose, see if there's any water in it. Feel like there's water in it? Yeah, it's not flowing, no. Okay, we need to follow this hose up to where it, uh, to where it hits the creek. There's a track here. Let's just keep following this track up. There we go, so there's water in that, but it's not flowing, so and the hose is going to be above that level, so we just need to keep following this track up until we get to the level. This place is awesome. A couple of waterfalls downstream. Don't slip on those roots, bro. Hold on tight, bro, she's a ways down. Oh, she is slippery. What's happened here is the pipes uh, come out of the water, so I'm just going to climb down here and um, stick it back in the water flow, and hopefully that'll get it flying again. I'll try not to fall in and get wet or dead. <laughs> All right, we've put the pipe back in the creek up top. Oh, I'm going to need a knife and a plumber's wrench to fix it properly, but that'll get us going till the till tomorrow. We can send the manager up and he can fix it. But uh, it's flying. That's good. We're just getting the airlocks out of it by running this for a while. And then um, once this runs, no more bubbling, which it looks like it's sweet. We'll just check these uh, these hot header tanks here. They're settling tanks just to give uh, give it the water a bit of a chance to settle, so that any murky water sinks to the bottom. And then um, hopefully she'll fly into the main header tank, and we'll be away. All right, we just ran into these two jokers, and um, they've caught a donkey of a crayfish. It's it's massive, just weighing it now. <laughs> I reckon it's going to go nine pound. That was the guesstimate on the boat anyway. Aim high, aim high. Pace to aim high. One pound nine. And that is... Ooh, just under nine. Would that make it just under nine? Ten yeah. pound two. That's 16 ounces. Look at that. That's an absolute perler. Stroke luck. Um, we just ran into Barry Bird from Seabird Charters. At the Wilderness Lodge, uh, me and Barry have been emailing occasionally and finally met him in person and of course his lovely wife Lynn and uh, he's just looking up on his Simrad navigation unit here, he's going to show us where to get the power, I'll move away a little bit so you can't see the marks, we don't want to give away Barry's secret spots, uh, tomorrow you'll be able to see where I go but you won't actually be able to see where I go if you know what I mean. So yeah that was a stroke luck, we've had a couple of rums and been yarning about the ridiculous state of the blue cod fishery up here in the Marlborough Sounds. Uh, and the, we're not actually in the sounds, are we, right now? Yep. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, we are still yeah. in the sounds. Yeah. There we go. So I'm going to have a bit of a moan on, uh, on the internet interweb thing about that tomorrow. But uh, meanwhile, he's going to show us where to get some power. So hopefully, if I don't lose my camera again tomorrow, you'll be able to see us uh, get some power and catch some kinkish. So we're just about to go to bed in our little batch at the Wilderness Lodge, and we notice something that's that's kind of classic. There's um there's some pretty good hand paintings that someone's done paintings on canvas of different fish here, but I'm not too sure uh, if they're not familiar with the fish or if they did it on purpose. But uh, guess this fish. All right, this one. We reckon that one's some kind of a hake across a blue cod. Is there such a fish as a hake? <laughs> Did I just make that up? <laughs> I might have just made that up. Maybe there's no such kind of fish as a hake. Anyway, I reckon that looks like a hake right there. That one. This one is a um, groper cross with a salmon or a, a trout. Uh, yeah, we couldn't quite figure that one out. It's a gro If you look at it from there, it's groper, but there it's salmon. Uh, that one, he pretty much nailed that one. That one, without doubt, is a John Dory. Um, yeah, basically nailed that one. And if we come over here, uh, this is something else you won't see every day. We're doing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Preparing breakfast. Oh, he's cooking the porridge early. That one is a, uh, a snapper with an extraordinarily long tail. And that one... I'm not too sure. What did you reckon that one was, Jack? Kawai? It's a kawai from there. Crossed with a... Um, Pufferfish, right? Pufferfish head. <laughs> or it could be a butterfish head. And a kawai in the back. And so a, pretty uh, awesome. And it looks like a, a rabbit head. It does. I we reckon that. these are his first ones. And as you go around the batches, they get better and better. Because... My wife, Kristen, actually started painting birds on corrugated iron and her first 20 or so birds that she did were pretty hilarious, actually. I'll go around to my mum's house, and Kristen's going to hate me for this, and video the, the first one she did, which was, was a fantail on a big bit of corrugated iron that's on my, my mum's garden at the back of her yard. And this thing looks like it's on drugs, eh? it's got massive big eyes and <laughs> looks like it's just been uh, scared by something scary. Now look at this, we've also got a, uh, our own personal map here with all the fishing hotspots but I won't zoom in on those because it's got lots of spot exits. Should we go to bed mate? See you tomorrow. I'll try not to drop my phone in the water so you, you'll actually see some uh, <laughs> some fishing action tomorrow. Jack's, um, Jack's buggered off in the jetty while I've been washing it down. I went to stash the hose and he floated away and now he's taking taken off out to sea and uh oh hey Jack jam in reverse mate you reckon you got this? Okay, bring it in real slowly. Re aim towards me, watch where you're going. He's bringing it in by himself. Reverse, quick, reverse, reverse, reverse. <laughs> Bloody hell. The weather wasn't gonna hold on. Oh, well done. Jacked it all by himself. Um, there, we were just washing the floor because yesterday spilled a whole bunch of detergent on the floor and uh, we were coming in through the quite big waves and uh, a couple of we had to punch through a couple of breaking waves out in the ocean there because that this it came up really quickly but the little dna handed it sweet and so i was slipping and sliding all over the place because of the detergent on the floor i had to brace myself in the seat with one foot down there on the transom and the other one kind of jammed up under the radio so i didn't end up falling on my ass coming back in it was pretty full on wasn't it jack no worries though, we both had a life jacket on and two boats out there, so if one of us got in shit, the other one was going to pull us out. It's nice and bright and early. Um, just leaving the Wilderness Lodge there in the background. What an awesome place to stay. He's got a backpacker-style accommodation and also um, hotel units and a whole self-contained house there that you can stay in. It's got a restaurant and bar, uh, a wharf. He's got a ferry you can pick out from the mainland, bring you out take your fishing you don't even have to um, have your own boat you can just come out here with no boat spend the weekend out here go fishing there's a really beautiful walkway up the back with waterfalls and stuff and it's right on the native bush and there's also deer and pigs out here we saw a deer uh, right there not last night but the night before and bait fish all over the water here so it's really good fishing off the wharf for piper and mullet pretty awesome yeah turn that simmer on jack I'm steering away from that white boy 
We're going to rig up, rig up our lines here before we get round into the channel. The conditions are supposed to be pretty good out there, so we're expecting quite a few boats. We've got a bunch of jigs provided by Black Magic, um, a variety of different colours and shapes. We've got pink ones, we've got blue ones, silver ones, a couple of massive ones there, and uh, we're going to rig them up on braid. We're using 80 pound trace. Basically, just got a uh, the main line, then a swivel that goes down to about six foot of, uh, of leader, and then tying the rig on the end of that. Pretty easy. Fish right there. Look at that. All right, hammer down, Captain. Hold on. Yep. Now you're captain. Oh, you're driving the ship. You're captain. Okay. There are two captains in this boat. That's confusing. No, only one. You're the captain. Yeah. Oh. Let's go, let's get out there to Stevens Passage, catch some kingies. Set 
got. Oh, 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 oh. Four ounces short. Eleven pounds seven. Four ounces short. Bloody hell! I just can't win. Can't win. Still, it's a damn good cry, I reckon.